Oh, welcome back to this video on Table Why I Fix Stuff. It's TV time. This is a, uh, I believe it's a 1948, I think it's a Sentinel 400. I'll have to double check on the uh, model number, but this is a late 40s portable TV. I'm um, sure so you can, can't see it because my frame is not big enough. Um, there is a handle on the top of it. See it right there. Uh, it's about the same size and shape as um, a RCA P31 portable radio from the early 30s. Uh, this is just about, you know, almost 20 years later. Um, I can see someone's done a hack job here. This knob is not supposed to be here. I don't know where it is. Um, it's right above the channel. Uh, and, and speaking of channels, um, this TV, I believe, has channel one, even though there's no indicator. Well, you can see there's no indicator down there for channel one. I think you can see it. No, you can't really see it. Let's move in a little bit here. So it stops at two, but there's a position here, two, and then I can turn it past two, and then it stops. So it looks like there may be a position for channel one, even though it's not labeled. Um, or once we take this apart, I'll check the tuner and see if, if anything actually happens in that position. Uh, we've got a contrast, brightness, on off volume. Seems kind of stiff. The knob is slipping. I actually have to pull these knobs off. I guess they just pull off. Oh, okay. And then that control is replaced because it looks like there's, um, like, like there was knurling on the inside of the shaft, like it should be a knurled shaft, but it's a keyed shaft. See like this, like this has the, the ridges on it to grab the ridges on the inside of the control, but the volume one does not. It has a, I don't know if someone cut that keyway in it. It looks pretty rough. It's weird. Um, I have to take these off to take it out of the cabinet. It is a split chassis. Looks like it's been glued or something. I don't know if you can see in there. Um, so, I'm not sure what about that, but this knob, the way the volume one was, was definitely not gripping the shaft very well. Uh, this one feels like it has a set screw in it, so let me dig up an Allen wrench for that. Alright, so we got the knobs off the front, turn it around, this is the back. Um, so the cabinets are going to separate a little bit there, so we'll have to look at that. You can see how this side is like the leather meets nicely, but here it's, it's like it's separating. And actually, if you look at the side there, you can see that. Focus. Uh, you can see that it's uh, starting to separate, so I'll have to take a look at that. If we can fix it, or at least prevent it from getting worse. On the back, we've got uh, a couple controls here, antenna terminals. Um, looks like a place where it would screw in and a place where the power cord would be. Opens up. And you can see there's the power input there. This is focus it is. So we've got an upper chassis here with the CRT on it, and a lower chassis here with the power transformer and the speaker and or the, the tuner and everything. Um, Looks like these are just unplug, I guess. Can't just unplug this. So this will also unplug. Yes, it will. Yeah, it looks like it's keyed, so it should only go in one way, so that's good. So, as I'm going to pull both these chassis out, and we'll take a bit of a look at them out, outside the cabinet. Yeah, so, I got this out of the cabinet now. Um, you can see this is the upper chassis with the CRT and the lower chassis with the speaker and the tuner and the power supply. Um, so this is that extra shaft and it looks like this is the... Actually, it looks like this is nothing because I don't really see anything moving when I tune this. Unless it goes all the way in there and turns something. Could be the fine tuning. Not really sure what exactly it is. I mean, that's what it looks like, but I don't really see anything moving. So I'm not quite sure. Um, I have to look closer at that. Either way, looking at it, it looks like it's supposed to be there. 
Like, it doesn't look like it was hacked in or anything. Um, see the screws on the front in this bracket. I suppose somebody could have added that, but again, I'm not sure like why they would. Um, it doesn't really seem to want to pull out, so I don't know. I'll take a look and see if this is the right tuner. I'll take a look online and see what other, what other people have um, for the tuner in this particular TV. So that some of the other people have posted pictures of their child. So I'll have to take a look at that and see if this is the correct tuner. And if it is, why don't they have this? Um, this is the, the channel um, changer down here. Just can't turn it without the knob on it. It's pretty stiff. But that's normal. Um, so this, kind of interesting, it actually looks like this chassis might be aluminum. Um, it definitely feels like really light. Like this is way lighter than it should be for a TV or radio chassis. Um, and I'll notice that there's no yoke on the CRT because this is electrostatic focus. Um, pretty common for the seven inch sets of back then. They all use this uh, seven JP4 CRT. Um, other interesting thing about this is looking at like the tube chart, it looks like they ha actually have two separate oscillators. Like usually in TVs, the horizontal oscillator does both the horizontal frequency and the high voltage. But in this case, it looks like they have this separate oscillator for the high voltage. And the horizontal oscillator is one of these uh, six SN7s here. Um, that's kind of interesting. Um, probably take this off and take a look in the high voltage cage. Um, I have already tipped this up a little bit. You can, well, if my tripod would crop right, you could see what's under there. You've got some uh, waxy capacitors in here, and I don't know if you can see it, but that one says 6,000 volts. That one says 6,000 volts, 6,000 volts. So I know for a fact I don't have any 6,000 volt capacitors, so I won't be changing those today. I might try powering this up just to see what happens, but a uh, good chance that these are not going to be any good. Um, and that's pretty common for these electrostatic focus sets. Um, definitely a different, completely different circuit design um, for the high voltage and the deflection and everything from a regular um, magnetic focus, uh, magnetic deflection CRT. So I might try piling this up just to see what happens. I don't really expect it to work with these capacitors in there, um, but just out of curiosity, we'll see what we get. Um, so yeah, I'll have to order all those capacitors. I do see a selenium rectifier in here. Actually, I see two of them. There's one there and there's one there. I'm not sure if you can see that, there they are. Um, one of these sand bar resistors. That looks bad. I see a fuse in here. I'm not sure what that's for. Actually, I'm just going over to the selenium rectifiers. Um, I actually didn't check and see if this has a rectifier tube. Let me check that. The power transformer is on this chassis, but I don't see a rectifier tube in the area. We took the tube chart here. I don't see it, so I wonder if they were using those two selenium rectifiers as the rectifier for this set. Um, I don't think they have them up here, but the power transformer is down there. I'm assuming that's the power transformer anyway. I don't think it would be the vertical. Are any transformers under here? Um, actually, this guy doesn't even need a vertical output transformer because it's electrostatic. So, why doesn't need it? Um, so, yeah, those might might be good, might be bad. Um, might replace them anyway, because when they do go bad, they release a giant cloud of smoke, which is inconvenient. So I might just replace those with um, some diodes instead. Um, but anyway, I think right now what I'm gonna do is plug this in and turn it on and just see what we get and hopefully we don't get a cloud of selenium rectifier. Okay, so that is off. I'm gonna plug this in now. I'm gonna turn it on very quickly just to see if anything goes. I thought it would. Volume control is not. Oh, nothing 
exploded. And this should basically have instant voltage because of those um, selenium rectifiers don't have to warm up. See the filament glowing in the CRT. It's a good sign. Don't see anything. That volume. Don't see anything on the CRT though. Some brightness. Contrast. Turn off the lights here. Yeah, they don't see anything on the CRT, which is not really surprising. I don't really expect it to work with all those bad capacitors. So that's, that's as far as we can get right now. I'll have to order those capacitors. Assuming the CRT is even good, that is. Yeah, brightness is not doing anything. Contrast is not doing anything. See the oscillator tube glowing, but that doesn't really mean anything. Okay. And no. Was that something there? Hear the vertical running. There's not even any like flash or anything on the screen when you turn it off, so good chance that there's not even any high voltage. Which is really not surprising. Okay, so I guess I'm going to have to order those capacitors. Um, those 6,000 volt ones for the, I'm sure there's some in the oscillator circuit. I'll take a look at it, but I'm pretty sure that it's not, those are probably going to be the problem, at least to start with. Or at least those will be one of the problems. Okay, so I dug up a schematic for this, and it turns out that none of those 6,000 volt capacitors uh, seem to be in the actual oscillator circuit. I think they're just in like the horizontal and vertical circuits. So uh, the oscillator circuit is actually self-contained right here under the high voltage cage. Uh, I'm taking the high voltage cage off and lifted this um, plate up a little bit to get access to underneath it so I could check some voltages. And it looks like everything is pretty low. Um, let me go on this point right here. This point is the plate of the oscillator tube, and that is supposed to be 250 volts. Let me turn this on. And you can see it goes up to around 200, um, but as the tubes start to warm up and get a load on the B, it um, starts going back down. See it's dropping now. Now it's supposed to be 250 volts, so that's low. Um, I can go on this point here, this point right here, it's supposed to be 115, here it's only 87, and then the actual B plus supply coming into the oscillator circuit um, directly from the main filter capacitor is only 180. So there's no way we're going to get 250 volts on that plate of the oscillator tube. We only got 180 coming into the circuit. Um, so that's going to be a problem. Although, I did play around with the tuner, and we do have some static now. So if you can hear that, hopefully. Well, that's a good sign, at least the tuner seems to be working, at least somewhat. Turn this back on. So, I think my next avenue of action is just going to be start replacing these filter capacitors. I'm going to start with the three main sections um, that do the main B plus filtering and see if that will raise this voltage any. Um, could also be the selenium is getting weak. Uh, they start to go high resistance as they start failing. Um, and I can check and see if they're getting hot. And if they are, so I just feel right here. Uh, yeah, they're a bit warm. So I might just go ahead right away and put some diodes in there. Um, so that 
Uh, hopefully that will raise our B plus voltage enough to get correct voltages in this oscillator circuit and maybe it'll start working then. Um, another thing to note is this the feedback for this oscillator is actually this little ring around the high voltage rectifier tube and apparently the, the position of that ring is critical for oscillator operation. I'm sure I can show this or not, but in the back of the cabinet here, I can't show it because my tripod is not going to cooperate, but in the back of the cabinet, uh, somewhat says if you change the oscillator to make sure you put that ring back in the same position. See if I can see where exactly it says that. Uh, yeah, do service one, one B three G T, and the twos you move the screws. Uh, um, yeah, what is it saying? Then remove shield mark exact position of wire spring ring around on one B three G T dash eight zero one six two before. Moving tube and replace the ring in the same position after installing the tube. So apparently the position of that ring is pretty critical for this oscillator to work properly and I have no idea of knowing if that's in the right position or not. Um, I did read through the alignment, in, well I didn't really read through it, I skimmed through the alignment information and I didn't see anything about how to properly set that. So. Um, if we get the correct voltages on that tube and the oscillator still isn't working, um, I'll probably start fiddling around with that ring and see if I can get it to run that way. Um, I did off camera, before I took this whole thing apart, I did take a screwdriver and just tap the cap of the rectifier tube just to see if there was any high voltage. And like there's basically no walk there at all. Um, the only spark would have been from like the 180 or whatever volts that would be the B plus. So the, there's no um, boosting going on by the oscillator. I do think this flatback's pretty cool though. It's a neat stacked coil. It's definitely not the typical style, um, although this is not a typical TV because it's the electrostatic focus, so um, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, anyway, so let me figure out which of these. There's one capacitor here, here, and here. I'm um, guessing it's probably going to be this big fat one. It actually looks like this one. Oh yeah, you can feel this one's getting warm, so definitely some leakage going on there. This one doesn't really feel warm. This one's pretty cool, so. Yep. My first guess would be this, and my second guess would be the spinning rectifiers that are pulling our voltage down. Uh, there is another 40 microfarad electrolytic in this circuit as well. Um, that does some filtering after some dropper resistors. Uh, that could be dragging it down. Um, but given that the, the B plus going into the circuit is low and that B plus is taken right off the second um, filter capacitor, um, they got a field coil. So they got one filter capacitor, they got a field coil, and they got another filter capacitor, and then they've got a resistor and then a third filter capacitor. But the feed for this circuit is taken off the second one before that resistor. So. Uh, most likely it's one of those two in the primary filter circuit that's dragging it down. Uh, so that's why I'm focusing on this. Um, there is another electrolytic that's part of the doubler circuit. If it's in the same can, I may just change that as well and just eliminate this whole can. Um, since, you know, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to leave this failing thing in here uh, since we don't know which one is dragging it down. Anyway. So let me do that, um, and maybe the seleniums, and we'll see if that fixes our voltage issues. Okay, so I've replaced um, the three sections in this one capacitor here. Um, got my meter hooked right up, hopefully you can see it. This will be on that, um, that same like secondary, or that first B plus tap right after the fuel coil um, on the second section of the capacitor. Um, that was the point that was like 180 volts last time, that should have been like 250. So I left the sitting identifiers in place, I'm using them right now as a, um, a tie point for one of the capacitors. So if they still get hot with these new capacitors in, 
uh, then I'll replace them because they're going bad. But it could have been they were getting hot just because of the excessive current draw of the leaky capacitor. So we'll see. Um, if I do that, I'll have to mount some terminal ships and everything to hold the capacitors because there's not enough space in there to mount them on the existing locations. But anyway, let's turn it on and see what we get this time. And help actually turn my meter to the right setting. Yeah, that looks better. 259 volts. Probably better than we were getting before. Volume control is pretty dirty. Let's turn it on. So 229, still a little bit low. Should be around 250. Let's see what the voltage is on the plate of that tube. Is yeah, it's still about 211. So maybe they're seeing the rectifiers are going high resistance, so I have to change them. This looks pretty good. The SOC 115, I think, and that's well, it was 115. One 101, so that's even dropping a little bit now. So yeah, I don't think we are. Yeah, it's still dropping. Okay, so I think the next step is going to be to change those cleaning rectifiers then because the voltage is still low. It's better, but still low. Um, I can check this. This is supposed to be negative 30 volts for the oscillator, and it's only negative 0.7, so yeah, oscillator is still not working. Okay, so next up, I guess, would be to change the Swinging rectifiers then, uh, since we are still not operational. Okay. Anyway, um, okay, I'll do that and see what difference that makes. Okay, so I have replaced um, these two selenium rectifiers along with the sandbar resistor that's 10 ohms. Um, you can see the corrosion starting there, and that's usually the death of those sandbars. The corrosion gets up inside and uh, goes open. Um, so I just replaced the two sand identifiers with two um, 1 in 4007 diodes. Um, they're down there on this terminal ship that I installed. Uh, this, is, this is supposed to be like a, a 60 megafarad capacitor. All I have was a 47, so that's what I'm using now. Um, this is what I, what I had in before with the selenium, and I replaced that capacitor in. There wasn't any filter hum noticeable in the speaker, so it was probably good enough for now, but I will have to order um, the proper size for that. This wire was the ground wire going to the um, one, one of the selenium rectifiers. Um, the terminal ship that I've installed has a ground lug on it, so I've just used that instead of this, so I'll probably remove this later once I verify everything. Um, because the 1 in 4007 diodes have a lower voltage drop than the selenium rectifiers. I went from a 10 ohm resistor to a 50 ohm resistor here. Um, so we'll have to check and see if that's going to be the appropriate value, or you know, if we have to go higher. Like if our voltage is still too low, um, then we'll probably go with lower value here. If the voltage is too high, we'll have to go with a higher value here. But I figure we start with 50 and see what that gets us. Um, like I said, the original was 10, just extra 40 ohms. Uh, not sure what the current draw is on this, but of course the current draw is probably getting a little bit high now anyway because of all these old leaky capacitors. But anyway, so that's in there. Um, let's flip this back down and see if this rectifies our low B plus issue. All right, so let's see if this works. So if we've got something installed backwards, I'm going to blow up a couple capacitors. Um, so the voltage here, this is on the B plus point before it enters the oscillator so this should be right off that second uh, filter capacitor right after the uh, filter choke. Let's see what happens this time. So we're looking for at least 250 volts here. And it looks a little bit better. Should drop as the tubes start conducting. a little more than I like. So maybe that resistor I've got in there is still too high at 50 ohms. 
Yeah. Volume control is pretty dirty. Yeah, so that's still going to be too high, I think, or a resistance value there. That should be about 250 volts. Let's see what we've got. This should be the plate of that oscillator too. Yeah, that's too low. Um, this should be negative 30 when the oscillator is running in, of course. It's only negative 0.5 because the oscillator is not running. Okay, so I'll have to change that resistor for a lower value one and see if that brings our voltage up. It's definitely still too low. It's about where we were at last time, I think, around 207 on the B plus. So um, maybe I'll put that 10 ohm uh, back in for just for testing purposes and see if that gets us anywhere. Uh, so let me do that. All right, just for experimentation purposes, I put a um, 100 ohm resistor in parallel with the 50 ohms, so that should be the equivalent resistance now uh, to 33 ohms. So we'll see if that's enough. So again, I'm hooked up on that uh, B plus line entering the or not entering. I'll put on the B plus line right off that uh, second capacitor. So should be like the main B plus there. Uh, still dropping pretty fast, so given that may be too high of a resistance. I thought something is like really shorted. Dude, it does sound like the protocol is running though. Or it could just be this transformer humming. Can't really tell. And it's about the same actually. So maybe we'll go back with that 10 ohm then. It doesn't make any difference at all, dropping that resistance. See, this capacitor, this capacitor doesn't seem to be getting warm, so I doubt that's leaking. And this is the, something is smoking, maybe that's just dust from this. This guy's not getting warm. Okay, so I guess we need to try a different resistor then. It's still way too low on the B plus. I don't know if anything is like seriously short on the B plus line, because like this is two diodes. So as soon as you turn this on, um, you know, the full B plus voltage is applied, you know, to all the tube plates and everything. And then as the tubes start conducting, that's when it starts dropping. So um, unless like one of these tubes is biased on like way too hard, which I suppose could be the case. Um, let's see, how hot is this tube? It's pretty warm. Um, I could try pulling that tube, actually. That's the oscillator tube. Uh, we could try pulling that tube and just see if that makes any difference on the B plus. Um, let me do that. Okay, so the oscillator tube has been pulled. Let's see if, um, that could be what's dragging, putting such a huge load on the B plus, or if you know that's drawing us normal current and just the load of the set is too much. So 226 now, so that's still too low. It's a little bit higher, so that caught us about maybe 20 volts. So you know it's not super surprising that there would be excessive current draw through that tube, given that the oscillator is not running. Um, but either way, even without that tube, that's still still too much current. Or I mean not too much current, still too low of a voltage. So still gonna have to go with a um, a lower value resistor, I think. Alright, so I'm probably gonna put that 10 ohm back in and we'll see what that does for us.
Okay, so the original 10 ohm resistor is now installed. Uh, so we got this time again, I'm still hooked up on the, the plus out of that filter capacitor. Dropping as the tubers warm up. Somewhat better. It's around 250. Seems to have stable, stabilized out right there. So let's check the voltage here on the plate. 242, that's pretty close. Supposed to be 250. This is supposed to be around 115. 113, pretty close. Okay. Let's check if the oscillator is running yet. This voltage is. Nope, still. Negative one, so no. Should be supposed to slide this up. Can't really slide it now because this is detached. Okay, so also there's obviously still not running because this is supposed to be negative thirty volts when it is running, and it's only at negative one. Um, so it's also something up the oscillator circuit. Let me turn this off before I cook that tube. Just double check the B plus one more time. Off. B plus is still at 251. Okay, so B plus seems to be good now. Um, and once it also is running, you might have to readjust. It might draw somewhat less current, um, but you know, a couple volts here and there probably would be okay. So, and the next thing I'm going to do is there are t at least two paper capacitors in that oscillator circuit. I think I might try replacing those first, and if that doesn't help, um, I might play around with the feedback ring. With um, this feedback ring here on the rectifier tube. Um, you can see there's at least one, there's a one capacitor down there and there's like another one underneath there. So I'm looking into changing those, um, I'm looking into playing with that ring. But at least now we've got good B plus voltage, so, um, you know, definitely wasn't going to work without that. So making some progress, but still nothing really tangible yet. Okay, so it's been about um, a week, I guess, since the last video section. Um, got some tubes in, got some capacitors in. Uh, specifically, I've changed out the high voltage oscillator tube and the high voltage rectifier tube. So if I'm here, here. You can see that. Okay. I guess we'll just clip right here on the B plus and now. I've got the um um, boost voltage rectifier out for the time being. And as you can see, we now have high voltage. There's a faint line there on the screen. Um, of course, it's not going to really do anything because with the a boost, without the boost voltage, probably then, well, actually the original oscillator is running, which is kind of interesting because I think the boost voltage supplies voltage for that. It's kind of surprising that that's running at all. Vertical is not running. Don't want to run this for long because I want to run a spot into the screen. You can see we're at 297, which is too high on the B plus, um, which is not entirely surprising, given that this tube now will draw more current. So it's 293. Um, so let me just pop this in just to see what happens. If we get any vertical or anything. Ooh, something happened there. Twitched a little bit. Hey, and we've got some vertical now. Way too much vertical. Probably because I was twiddling with these controls. Um, vertical, vertical, vertical size. Oh, that's interesting. So vertical size is adjusting the horizontal size. Curious. Let's see what horizontal size does. 
or the other side that's going to adjust the vertical size. I wonder if this tube is in the sideways or something. Oh, you know why? Because this chassis would be rotated, that's why. I'm being stupid. This chassis would be rotated this way in the cabinet, so that's why it's backwards. Not thinking clearly there. Right, I can just use some of these controls. So that's mm, relatively good. Um, you know, it's not surprising that, I mean, it's actually surprising that this works at all, given that it's still got all those crappy high voltage capacitors in there. Um, okay. So that makes sense. I got uh, vertical sending, horizontal sending. So I play with all those controls. Um, this is very promising, I would say. Uh, let's turn this off before we button that line into the screen. Uh, we've got high voltage. Both oscillators run even with all those crappy capacitors in there, which is really surprising. Um, so because this would normally be mounted that way, um, that's why vertical is actually this way and horizontal is actually this way. So with this mounted this way, the vertical oscillator was uh, the one that was running and we would, would have had like the vertical line had this been the right orientation. Um, and then the horizontal oscillator was not running, but I started running once I put in the uh, boost voltage rectifier. So um, yeah, look, looking pretty promising here. Um, didn't seem too dim, so hopefully it'll be a, a good strong picture. I didn't try playing with the brightness or contrast, but um, yeah, okay. So I'm not sure what exactly the issue was in the oscillator circuit here. Um, when I was playing around with this, I did try changing the oscillator tube first and it made no difference, and then I changed the rectifier tube and then that's when the high voltage came up. Uh, so maybe the only issue was that, but I'm probably going to leave both these new tubes in here um, because this old tube, the old oscillator tube, um, probably kind of roasted now given that it was that we were playing with it for so long without the oscillator running. So, um, and this tube wasn't particularly expensive. I actually got a couple of them to play around with. So, I'm um, going to probably leave those in there. Uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of filament cook off on the boost voltage rectifier. So, I do have spares of those. If we realize that our boost voltage is off, um, we can change that. For now, I'm going to leave it in there. Um, next step, I think, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it or not, but down there is one remaining um, paper capacitor in the, like down underneath this uh, plate there. I'm not sure if you can really see it. It's kind of hiding down there. Um, that is a special one. That is. 10,000 volts at like 0 0.0005, so like five or how many zeros? 0 0.0005, so like uh, 400 or 500 rather uh, picofarads for that one. Um, so that's in the box that I ordered for capacitors, so we'll change that out. May or may not increase the high voltage. Um, that capacitor is actually not on the schematic, I'll have to pull up the schematic and it shows you, but. Um, on the schematic, it's supposed to be like 370, and I think it's supposed to be a doorknob capacitor. Um, there is only one doorknob capacitor in here. And it's actually, if you can see it or not, right there it is, that doorknob capacitor. So basically the way that the filtering off the high voltage rectifier is, is that capacitor up underneath the paper one is connected directly to the cathode of the rectifier tube. So it's right on the high voltage output. Then it goes through a resistor, and then the other side of that resistor is filtered by this doorknob capacitor. Um, so I don't know whether originally there was like a doorknob capacitor mounted under this chassis, like another doorknob capacitor mounted under the high voltage chassis, and that went bad, and they put the paper one in at a different value. Um, not entirely sure. Either way, I've got a ceramic uh, high voltage capacitor to replace that with. Um, I'm not worried about that throwing anything off because, uh, for one thing, the other capacitor is already a ceramic capacitor, that doorknob one. Um, it looks like it was supposed to be ceramic originally, and it's not in any sort of like critical oscillator circuit or anything, it's just plain DC filtering on the high voltage output. So I'm not concerned about that being a ceramic, so I'll put that in. Um, for the other capacitors, I got um, uh, film capacitors. 
like these style. Um, let's see. We'll focus. These are a 0 0.01 at 3,000 volts. So some of the stuff that's going to go in the oscillator circuits. So start working on that. Um, the vertical seemed not too bad, so I'll probably start changing capacitors in the horizontal first and see if we can get the horizontal, you know, to fill all the way out. Um, and see where we go from there. All right, so I completely recapped the um, vertical circuit. Turn this back on here. See, there was some. Uh, Pretty nasty capacitors in there. This one here is a uh, 0 0.005 at 6,000 volts. You can see how juicy the end is there. So we came all over the place. So uh, there were two of those. The other one wasn't quite as bad. Um, those are. Oh, well, let's go plug it in first before turning it on. Might be beneficial. Um, so, uh, there were two of those that went from like the boost voltage area, not really the boost, I'll check the schematic, actually I have the schematic right here, pull it up, I think I actually went the high voltage to the deflection plates. So that would be these two guys right here. So, um, so the vertical amp is right here. And then the two charge the vertical amp over to drive the two plates for vertical deflection. And those two capacitors there, or one of those is the real juicy one. Um, and then the, you can see the bias voltage for those plates comes from the vertical centering control, which is connected to the high voltage point there. Um, and then the plate voltage for that tube comes from this resistor divider network all the way down there, back and then through more resistors up to the plates of that tube. Um, so you can see it's still not quite right. Um, and remember, because this chassis is rotated in the cabinet, it would be this way. So the horizontal is actually scanning vertically now and you can see we've got these little ripples in it um, and because there are ripples in like the horizontal traces it actually means that like whatever this rippling is you can't really see it because of the frame rate is not going to let me let me try adjusting the vertical there if you can get the camera to sync to it let's see Okay, you're gonna see the how it's like ripply on the side. It's still not quite what I'm seeing. I'm seeing you know this whole white area here. You're just seeing like a zigzag, which I don't see because of the frame rate. But anyway, so you can see how it's like lumpy. Um, so that means that whatever these lumps are is that a a multiple of the horizontal frequency. Um, I'm thinking that it might be the high voltage oscillator. I don't know what frequency the high voltage oscillator runs at. But remember in this TV. Um, we have one oscillator for the high voltage oscillator that drives the flyback and the horizontal oscillator is a separate oscillator over in this section. Um, so it could be that, you know, if the high voltage oscillator is running at say, what, maybe seven, six or seven times or seven or eight times the horizontal oscillator frequency. Um, these could be like the lumps in the high voltage possibly, um, or the boost voltage more likely because uh, the boost voltage drives the horizontal oscillator. Um, so it could be that um, there are still old capacitors in the horizontal section, so maybe that's loading it down. And actually, I think that the boost voltage is somewhat low. Okay, I checked that. Let me put this up here. Let me see that. Okay. So if I check, it's supposed to be like 700 volts, I think. So we'll check it right here. We're seeing 600, so that's like 100 volts low then. 
Um, so, you know, could be like excessive drain on that, um, causing, you know, improper filtering in the boost voltage, potentially. Um, I did change the boost voltage rectifier and didn't seem to make any difference, so I um, don't think that's the issue. But what I'm going to do next is um, move to recapping the horizontal oscillator and just see if changing out those old, probably leaky capacitors helps with the boost voltage and also helps get rid of this um, issue here. Because I did recap all the filter capacitors around the boost voltage rectifier in, um, on the high voltage sub chassis. So um, the boost voltage rectifier like output should be good, but you know, it might be loaded down by leaky capacitors in the original oscillator. So yeah, that's gonna be my next move. Um, I wish I could get this to work better. That's the horizontal anyway that I'm adjusting now. That's vertical. So can you see it now? You can see how it's like wavy a little bit. It's like really low. Yeah, anyway, uh, I think we're going to move on to recapping that horizontal section to see if that makes any difference. Alright, so let me see if I can bring the horizontal in to lock with the rippling. If we go right there, I'm not sure, well, pretty touchy, but. Every time I, now you can see that, that there's ripples in the display. Now, um, I'm sorry to mention, I recapped the horizontal section. So this entire chassis uh, now has all the old paper capacitors out of it. Now I'm gonna install this cage back over the high voltage area. And what did you know it? The rippling pretty much goes away. And it's a little bit twitchy yet, but um, that could easily be because uh, there is no, you know, sync pulses coming in. Um, I don't have any video source hooked up to this, so that looks a lot better that way. A little bit of it's not quite linear up at the top there. I do see retrace lines, so um, let me adjust the and the brightness when you turn the brightness down. So that's up or down. It must be down. Fades out, but you notice that it gets a little bit wider too. So I still think we have some voltage problems because when you turn the brightness down then you're taking the load um, off or some of the load off the the high voltage circuit and you see it it's a little bit wider so I think there's still some voltage problems that need to be looking looked into um, check no, I can't check because I have the shield on but I need to lift the shield up a little bit see if I can Check the voltage. You can see that yes. Let's lift this up just a little bit. Okay, here. Here uh, and something is working now. Five so it actually went down a little bit then. Um so I think there's still some voltage issues in the flyback area. Of course the retrace lines off looking at that, but um, yeah, I haven't recapped anything on the tuner and video amp chassis yet, so 
That could also be related. Video changes when I change the tuner. So at least the video is getting through, you know, from the tuner. I don't hear any audio though. I do try to clean these controls. See, brightness has an effect now. Contrast has somewhat, somewhat of an effect. So you wouldn't really expect much effect from contrast when there's no video signal. What I might do just for fun is hook up a video source and just see um, what, if anything, we get now um, before I do any work on the tuner chassis. So let me get that set up. Okay, video source is hooked up, and we do actually have something. We have audio. Let me try adjusting. Pretty distorted. I wonder if we've got like some of the audio leaking into the video somehow. I guess getting worse and worse as time goes on. Try adjusting. Audio. I know if I pause it and stop the audio. You know, it doesn't seem to make any difference. Just definitely have Adjusting horizontal. Yeah, almost. So it looks like something is. So, um, not surprisingly, the sink is not sinking. It's horizontal. Adjusting, fine tuning a little bit here. Something's loose with this. It's just me wiggling the fine tuning knob, or the fine tuning shaft. So that, and I'm not like tuning, but just like physically. There's like a bad ground on the tuner or something. Video is getting through, so it's definitely promising in that respect. Just pretty crappy video. Now push down on it, left up on it, it goes whiter. That's interesting. Hoping that content ID will not be able to figure out what this is. So sync is super touchy. 
which is not surprising because sync is in the tuner chassis, which I haven't recapped yet, so it's not super surprising that we whacked out. What is interesting that it seems to be syncing differently for each scan line. Like the, the tearing on the end. Almost like like some scan lines it sinks and some it doesn't. Like it, almost like it breaks out for like some of the scan lines and like this one you got a video like that one's synced but then like some of them aren't almost it's kind of weird I'm shrink the horizontal I'll go the horizontal See, like it, it's almost like it, like it loses sync in the middle, but then like some of the top ones are synced. It's really weird. Nice. See, my alignment might be out too because. Like right there, the audio is clear, but the video is not the best. And now when we get sharper video, we got that buzz in the audio, so. Turn that down before copyright strike. Um, brightness. See that? Shouldn't really happen. Just contrast. It's kind of whacked out, but. Yeah, so I still think there's some issues with the high voltage. It should be higher, I think, than it is. Um, might try playing around with some different high voltage oscillator and high voltage rectifier tubes and just see if that makes any difference at all. Um, obviously, still have to recap the tuner chassis in order to get sync working. Um, other than that, though, sound like it seems pretty good. Like for the little bit of work that I've done, all I've done is is the um, the horizontal and vertical oscillator circuits and all the uh, receiver and IF and everything and audio is all the old paper caps yet so um, yeah uh, hopefully once I get the replace those capacitors in the sync circuit hopefully we'll get uh, more stable vertical and, vertical and horizontal sync um, bring this up a little bit Not sure how well it's coming through on the camera um, anyway Okay, so I think I'm going to call this part one of the video. Um, I'll pause it here now that you've got, you know, pretty promising results. And part two will hopefully be getting this, you know, working a lot better than it is now. I recap the uh, receiver chassis and hopefully figure out why we've still got, um, I like it should have more vertical uh, height, I think. Uh, it's, it's, I think it should have more vertical. Um, I think that again, I think that's due to the low boost voltage. So I'll have to figure that out. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.